Uncle Wiggily saves the day for Jimmy and Percival one chilly afternoon. Old Percival, the former circus dog, wasn't feeling his best. Some mischievous boys had tied a tin can to his tail and pelted him with stones. Poor Percival limped through the streets until, thankfully, Uncle Wiggily, the kind old rabbit, came along. He chased the boys away and took Percival home in his trusty automobile. Once they arrived, Percival found a cozy spot behind the kitchen stove, but he still felt miserable. I don't feel good at all, Percival groaned to Uncle Wiggily. I'm not sure if it's the tin can, the leaves they stuck on me, the bone they shoved in my mouth, or that sticky molasses, but something's not right. Maybe you've got the epizootic, suggested Alice Wibblewobble, the little duck girl, as she tied a new pink ribbon in her hair. That could be it, Percival muttered, blinking slowly to keep the dust out of his eyes. Let me make you some dog biscuit soup, said Mrs. Wibblewobble kindly. It might make you feel better. So Mrs. Wibblewobble made the soup, and Percival ate it, but he still felt too weak to perform his favorite tricks, the ones that once delighted the crowds at the circus. The only trick he could manage was standing on his tail and pretending to be a soldier, but even that tired him out, and he crawled back to his bed, feeling worse than ever. He's just not the lively dog he used to be, sighed Mr. Wibblewobble. I remember when he taught Petey and Jackie Bow Wow how to do tricks for the circus parade. That's right, agreed Uncle Wiggily. He's not as spry as he once was. That night, Uncle Wiggily played blind man's bluff with Lulu, Alice, and Jimmy Wibblewobble until it was time for bed. But the next morning, Percival still wasn't any better. As the duck children left for school, their mother reminded them, Please tell Dr. Possum to come and give Percival some medicine on your way home. We will, they promised. On their way out, they spotted Uncle Wiggily filling up his automobile with gasoline. Oh no! Are you leaving, Uncle Wiggily? asked Lulu, tossing a snowball further than even her brother Jimmy could manage. No, no, chuckled Uncle Wiggily. I'm just off to visit Grandfather Goosey Gander for a short ride. I'll be back before you get home. Don't forget to ask Dr. Possum to come and see poor Percival. The ducklings waved goodbye and hurried off to school, while Uncle Wiggily zoomed away in his automobile, whizzing through the fields and woods. However, when Lulu, Alice, and Jimmy stopped by Dr. Possum's house after school, they discovered that the good doctor wasn't home. They left a message with his wife, asking him to come as soon as possible. We'll send him right over when he returns, Mrs. Possum said with a worried frown. Poor Percival. When the ducklings got home, though, Dr. Possum still hadn't arrived, and Uncle Wiggily wasn't back yet either. Oh dear, cried Mrs. Wibblewobble. I don't know what to do. Dr. Possum isn't here, and I'm starting to worry that Uncle Wiggily might have had an accident. I hope not, Mama, said Alice, her eyes wide with concern. I'll go back and check on Dr. Possum, Jimmy said. Maybe he's home now. Thank you, Jimmy, his mother replied, handing him a molasses cookie. Here, take this for the walk and hurry back with the doctor. Jimmy took the cookie, happily munching it as he set off. He was nearly halfway there when, ouch, he stepped on a sharp stone that jabbed his foot painfully. Oh no, Jimmy cried, wincing. What am I going to do? I can't walk to the doctor now. Just as Jimmy sat down to figure out what to do, he noticed a pony munching on grass nearby. It wasn't just any pony, it was Munchy Trot, the friendly pony boy. Perfect, Jimmy thought. I'll hop on Munchy's back and ride to Dr. Possum's house. Jimmy hobbled over to the pony and, with a flap of his wings, jumped onto its back. Surprise, Munchy. Let's trot to Dr. Possum's house. We need to get medicine for poor Percival. But Jimmy made a big mistake. This wasn't Munchy Trot at all. It was a completely different pony, and when Jimmy flew onto its back, the startled pony panicked. With a whinny, it bolted down the road, galloping faster and faster. Stop. Stop. Jimmy cried, clinging to the pony's mane with his bill. The faster the pony ran, the more scared Jimmy became. Just as he thought he was going to fall off, who should appear but Uncle Wiggily in his automobile. Hold on tight, Jimmy, Uncle Wiggily shouted. I'm coming. Uncle Wiggily hit the gas, and his car zoomed ahead. In no time, 
He was driving alongside the galloping pony. Now jump, Jimmy, Uncle Wiggily called. With a flutter of his wings, Jimmy leaped into Uncle Wiggily's car and landed safely in the passenger seat. The runaway pony, realizing it wasn't being chased by anything scary, slowed down and came to a stop, looking a bit embarrassed. Phew, that was close. Jimmy sighed in relief. Thanks for saving me, Uncle Wiggily. You're welcome, my boy. Now, let's hurry to Dr. Possum. Poor Percival still needs his medicine. Together, they drove to Dr. Possum's house. The doctor had just returned, and Uncle Wiggily whisked him to Percival's side. Dr. Possum gave the circus dog the medicine he needed, and soon Percival was feeling much better. Dr. Possum even took care of Jimmy's sore foot, making sure he was as good as new. And so, with Percival recovering, Jimmy's foot healed, and Uncle Wiggily's quick thinking saving the day, everyone went to bed that night happy and relieved.